So we're going to just go through snow. Some of it's really basic, and you may know. Um, the budget for snow is set by the city charter. This year it'll be 60.2 million. On November 10th, we will go into what is called night cloud. That does not mean it's going to snow on November 10th. That means that we put staff on our 4 to 12 shift and our midnight to 8 a.m. shift. So if should anything happen, there are people available to put plows on trucks and get us ready. Um, though there are flurries in the forecast for Thursday. So the fact that I've been talking about snow since August will maybe start to make some sense. So we will add two additional vendors for weather. So we're getting multiple different sources of information. We'll also work closely with OAN and the National Weather Service. It's very helpful for us to sort of precisely time a storm if we can. We, it's not always possible. We also will perform a full dress rehearsal. So if you see orange trucks rolling around the city, in the next few weeks, we're practicing. Um, very important for us to practice. We have a lot of new sanitation workers on the job, uh, so they need to be up and ready to go. So in advance of any sort of weather event, I have been happy that the weather events have all been really DEP weather events, pouring rain and nor'easters. We'll issue alerts. We will do outreach via social media, Twitter, Facebook. Um, we will coordinate with the other city agencies. We will work through OEM to make sure that we are all ready to go. Um, when we get to a place where we're going to be at a plowable accumulation, we will shift to two 12-hour shifts. So that's the 7 to 7 that we operate when we're dealing with a big storm. Our salt spreaders, which is a very nice picture, hold about 16 tons of salt and also have calcium chloride saddle uh, bags on the side of it, which is a liquid and it allows the salt to work at lower temperatures. Uh, one thing we hope for this year is that we don't end up with such really low temperatures. <laughs> so plowing begins when we hit two inches. Um, you are not going to see blacktop. We train sanitation workers to try not to scrape to the street. The reason for that is that it knocks out all the manhole covers across the city of New York and actually causes more challenges uh, in terms of transportation going forward. So you should not expect to see black pop right away when we're plowing. The other thing is we always plow to the right. And the reason you plow to the right is if you think about it, and we usually aren't always turning to the right, is because if you're on a two-way, if you're plowing to the left, you're creating a ridge in the middle of the street or pushing it into oncoming traffic. And if you're making a left turn, uh, you would actually have it on the left and you'd put it into the middle of the intersection. Our whole desire is to clear the snow so that the first responders can get around. As we move into later operations during a very heavy snowfall, we will bring in the snow laborers. We are currently recruiting at all of our garages for snow laborers to pre-register. We are also working this year with DOT and several of their locations will also be pre-registering snow laborers. They are very useful in what I would call the handwork, which is clearing crosswalks, clearing bus stops, clearing pedestrian overpasses, step streets, some of those things. In 2014, we are adding 50 bobcat skid steers, I don't know if you sort of can use either terminology, which are like little tiny bulldozers. You would often see them probably if you uh, have ever seen them do landscaping. Um, this will help us be able to be out there and more efficiently deal with crosswalks and other things like of that nature. So it's going to be a mix of snow laborers as well as this, this new piece of equipment. So once we clear the streets, we start clearing snow. And what that means is you may see us actually move the plow to the left. The reason we're doing that is to break up those ridges, and if alternate side has been uh, put back in place, we will clear that parking lane, but we really need to have the temperatures to help us. There's no point in us shifting that into the street unless we think we're going to get something melted off. In addition, we bring in the big front loaders, the snow melters, and we'll bring on our, our, pile, uh, our piling and hauling operations which is where you know, we'll, we'll build a mountain in Floyd Bennett Field, 
uh, or other areas across the city. We have an enormous amount of equipment uh, dedicated to snow. So as you can see from this, it's broken down by borough. The salt spreaders, the holsters are just smaller salt spreaders. Um, the plowable trucks, the front end loaders, the skid steers, and the melters. And so you might say, well, this doesn't look exactly even. The way that we really look at dividing our equipment is that they're about 19,000 lane miles. And so if you're talking about, say, Queens Boulevard, you've got your service lane, you've got six lanes at least of traffic in both directions and another lane, another service lane on the other side. Um, and really the reason we need to know about lane miles is because that's how many plows I need. Uh, in addition, DOT is responsible for the East River crossings and the MTA or Port Authority are responsible for all the other crossings. Um, we coordinate very closely with those other organizations and particularly around areas where there's a lot of construction. I mean, figuring out, for example, if you're on the Staten Island Expressway, where are you going to turn around the vehicles so they don't go over the bridge? Or near the Van Whip, uh, another area where there's no longer an exit that we used to leave on and we have to turn those vehicles around so it's a lot of very close coordination. We have a lot of salt and we have a lot of contracts in place to make sure we will have plenty of salt this year. Due to the very low temperatures last year, we used a lot of salt. So already on hand, we have 267,000 tons of salt available, and we'll be able to put orders in for another 450,000 tons. Um, I don't think we will use that entire capacity this winter unless things are worse than last winter. In addition, we have 39 salt storage sites across the city, and we will begin very shortly opening up our seasonal sites. And that just makes it easier when we're in snow operations that they don't have to travel a long distance to get the salt to then get back on their route. In addition, inventory-wise, we have a lot of calcium chloride, we have sand, we have chains, and then we have additional plow vendors available should we need them. Snow routes. So this is something probably that you've heard us talk about quite a bit. Uh, the primary, the secondary, the tertiary routes. And it's really how we prioritize where we are going to be operating. Primary routes are highways, major streets, places where there are firehouses, police precincts, hospitals, schools. We did have to do a little change right there and there. We've got a lot more pre-K sites than we had had previously. Um, and we move through those different routes as weather conditions permit us. We won't leave a critical route or a primary route until we are sure that that will stay clear. One of the things we're doing is piloting something called sectoring, which changes the whole paradigm of primary, secondary, tertiary, and more or less eliminates the distinction between secondary and tertiary. In the Bronx, Queens, and Brooklyn, we will be doing it in three districts. In Brooklyn 8, in Bronx 6, and in Queens 6. We will be experimenting with this new approach. We have completed the sectoring routes for Staten Island and will shortly complete them for Manhattan. Yes, yes we will. Um, and what it does is it eliminates a lot of extra overlapping that was going on with our routes when you sort of, sometimes it didn't make sense to skip that tertiary block if the plow was right there on the, on the secondary. So this just makes us a lot more efficient. We would have tried to have gotten through all of the boroughs, but it's the work that's required to do this is first we start with the maps, we do the analysis, and then we go out into the street and actually drive everyone with equipment, see whether or not a big spreader can fit on some of those tertiary blocks. Sometimes they can't. Uh, but really trying to make sure that everything will work. So as I said before, these are the areas that will be using snow sectoring in this upcoming season. For those of you who are primarily, I think it's Bronx, Brooklyn, and Queens here. So as I said, Brooklyn 8, Queen 6, Bronx 6. 
So one of the reasons why we're moving to this, and I'm previewing it for those boroughs, because next year this will be how we operate. Um, you can see this is Northern Staten Island. Those are their new critical routes. Those are their new sector routes. The sectors end up being like little boxes. And it really helps us being able to make sure that the spreaders or the plows are in that particular area. And it's easier to supervise and ensure that uh, we're making the most of the miles that we have this cover. In addition, we've done a lot about technology this year. Um, right after the blizzard of 2010, we installed what were essentially flip phones as GPS devices in all of the vehicles. We have done uh, installation of over 2,000 new ABL devices. And in addition, we are deploying a new application to allow us to track the vehicles uh, more crisply. Uh, one of the things we also are experimenting with is something called dead reckoning. And those are even more precise ABL devices. Uh, one of the things, if you look at the picture of the old GPS, that's just one vehicle. Particularly in Manhattan with the canyon effect, it will look like trucks are going through buildings. It will look like they're driving through water. Um, the dead reckoning devices should put them back on to actual streets. There's just a lot of pain. GPS is a lot less precise than one would hope. In addition, when we're in a snow emergency, we are not actively taking complaints through 311. Those 311 complaints, what we call the rapid responses, are mapping in our operation center so that we can see whether or not we have a particular area that we're not getting to. And it's after we complete snow operations that we start taking them like, perhaps we missed a street. It does happen. Um, and then we'll start going out either on that shift, depending on what time of day it is, or on the following shift to follow up and make sure that we got that block. Um, but again, we think that this was a huge accomplishment to get all of these installations done before snow. The other thing is we've added all of the other city agencies. So DOT, parks, DET also will be uh, able to be tracked to the GPS system. So as I said before, GPS is not always precise. And so once that raw information goes up to do it, to be mapped for our very transparent website, Plow NYC, it does actually have to go through an algorithm. And we worked very hard to fix the algorithm that in some cases made it look like we had plowed areas that we hadn't plowed. And if you look at the bottom map, what you're seeing there is that the GPS dots sort of moved a little bit east, and so it looked like they were going through the middle of a building. And the, the old algorithm who painted all those side streets as if they'd been plowed because they had a pain on each of those side streets, even though the truck was obviously on First Avenue. Uh, so now the, the algorithm requires that the truck is traveling in the right direction as the street before it will paint. So we think that that will help moving forward. Here's a little bit clearer as you see that it was on 52nd Road, but it was the way that the data was coming back was a little bit north. And the old algorithm painted all those side streets even though we clearly had not been on them. So the new algorithm has us just on 52nd Road, though you know, there still can be errors and noise in the data, uh, even with the new algorithm. So we continue to try and make this better. Uh, but we also want to make sure that we depend on our field officers to be giving us eyes on the ground information. In terms of situational awareness, we have our operational center where we are monitoring Pound YC, where we're monitoring our own internal blade runner system, uh, where we are monitoring equipment, all the 311 data. Uh, you know, the things that are likely to happen is a plow gets stuck. So they'll radio in uh, and let us know. Um, or something's blocked, somebody else got stuck. If you have an SUV, that doesn't actually mean you should drive before we plow. Uh, a lot of those vehicles often get stuck because people are a little more aggressive perhaps than they should be. Uh, we're obviously always at the Office of Emergency Management, coordinating with them on all the different aspects of snow. 
in terms of NYPD and DOT, we go and watch their cameras to make sure that we can get information through their cameras. PD doesn't actually watch that many streets. They're watching more buildings than streets. So. Um, but DOT's got eyes all over the city with their cameras, which is very helpful. And we are out there in the field. I mean, at the end of the day, our field supervisors really need to be following their vehicles, reporting back in, and giving management all the information they need in case there are redeployments that need to be taken care of. At the end of this is just some frequently asked questions, and we've created a, a handout that everyone can take with them around snow. You know, why do we plow to the right? When do we start? You know, we're going to start salting as soon as precipitation starts. We're going to start plowing at two inches. Sort of those basic information around snow. Oh, and then when will your trash be picked up? We will reach out via the media and via social media when we will transition back to regular operations after a storm. And so we want to be back out getting garbage as soon as possible, but we do have in any sort of big storm, all of our employees dedicated to snow operations until we get 100% clear. So with that, I want to turn it over and let you ask me any questions.